2019, uh, Xiaomi announced a concept phone which was never released, uh, I guess because of mixed reactions, because it was a complete, well, maybe complete or almost all round screen phone. And I saw a few reactions to it. Some people were blown up and some people complained about how difficult it would be to use it. But the phone was never ever released. But I guess they took that technology and kind of pushed it ahead. Because in um, April of 2021, Xiaomi released the Mi 11 Ultra, which was considered by many as the giant killer. The giant being Samsung S21 Ultra at that time. And, you know, people were like, which one is better, this or that, this or that? As you can guess, I'm going to be talking about the Mi 11 Ultra. And the reason I am doing that is because I'm trying to do a comparison, not between two phones, not between two companies, but I have received a few questions about this which i've been pondering about myself about if you want to buy a mobile device should you buy a flagship device which is two or three years old or you buy a mid-range device which is released this year and by the way phones are in three categories the budget phones mid-range phones then flagship phones no, in ascending order in terms of budget, in terms of specs, in terms of build, that is uh, the order for all companies. Just about almost all companies produce phones in these three categories. So we'll be trying to see why or which should you go for. Should you go for a Mi 11 Ultra, which is a flagship that was made, which was released in April 2021? or you go for a mid-range like maybe the redmi note 12 pro plus which was released in march this year which should you so we'll be looking at these things in certain categories we'll be looking at the price we'll be looking at the screen we'll be looking at charging we'll be looking at the processors we'll be looking at the features and We'll be looking at the cameras because the camera has become one of the most important things in a mobile phone these days. Well, if not the most important, but very, very important thing to look at when you're looking at a mobile phone. So basically, we are almost comparing uh, the Mi 11 Ultra to the Redmi Note uh, 12 Pro Plus. Uh, this is a comparison you can do with just about any other phone, any other company, because all other companies who produce phones in these three uh, categories that I mentioned, the budget, the uh, mid-range, then the flagship. This phone doesn't have a earphone jack, so it's all wireless. Amazing speakers, an in-screen fingerprint reader, so it doesn't have the power button reader like the mid-range phones do have though i would think that in 2023 mid-range phones should have an optical in-screen reader I, I don't know that's just me the mi 11 ultra was released at about 1200 1300 dollars but currently two years from its release is about 600 620 dollars that's about half its cost is gone. Though the Mi, uh, the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus is still not up to that amount. I think it's about 500, 550. So it's still less than a two year old flagship phone, right? So that is it about the budget. So I'll talk about charging. So the Mi 11 Ultra is a 67 watt uh, charging device so it charges by cable at 67 watt it charges wirelessly at 67 watt and also this device has reverse charging at 10 watt meaning you can use this phone to charge another phone at 10 watt which in the other side uh, the mid-range phone has 
a whopping 120 watt charging that is crazy 120 watt unfortunately it has no wireless charging it's a mid-range phone so no wireless charging well personally i thought at this point certain wireless uh sorry certain mid-range phones would have wireless charging like this one the mi 11 ultra has a snapdragon triple eight processor which is a prime which is a top-notch processor for phones and these are used only in flagship phones right i guess in a few years maybe two three years when other stronger processors would have been made the uh, snapdragon triple eight will be used on maybe mid-range phones but as of now um i have not personally i've not seen a mid-range phone using the snapdragon triple eight but that is what it is uh the uh, redmi note 12 pro plus using uses the mediatek processor which yes it's for mid-range devices the mi 11 ultra comes with uh, 8 gig 120 gig of uh, storage or uh, 8 gig 256 of storage or 12 gig of ram and 256 storage or 12 gig ram and 512 storage um, the redmi note 12 pro plus max is 8 gig uh, 256 storage so you can tell that is different in terms of feature i cannot basically break this down to you because i haven't used the uh, the mid-range phone but the flagship i have used and it is packed full with features it's i mean packed full i cannot break all of them down to you but it's packed filled with features some of them were already on the mid-range phone of last year and the year before some of them are just upgraded when it comes to uh the software this is where the difference really is for me the android security patch usually uh sometimes is four years some five years which means you can have security updates for that android version for four or five years so if you're getting a flagship which is two years and uh the security patch that was provided for this device is say four years and you are buying a phone which was released two years ago that means you're only left with two years of security updates that okay is a downside though a lot of people would not even know or notice that difference so that is about it but on the other side you get a flagship phone which is two years old that means you have had two years of uh up the software updates and some of the problems that the software had on the release day would have been fixed i take the mi 11 ultra for example this device has a 1.1 inch amoled display at the back of the phone which you can use to do several things to do videos to use and have your selfies and stuff like that when this phone was released you could not use this display for more than 15 seconds so the software only allowed it to do a video for 15 seconds and then it goes off but after several updates you can have that display on as long as you turn it on some of the problems that this device had on its release date would have been fixed over time which buying it a few years would be advantageous in that domain though you would have a reduced period of security patch updates that is something you can compare and see which one works best for you so that is it about that part and the last part i want to talk about the camera yes the camera so the mi 11 ultra has a 48 megapixel ultra wide 128 degrees uh, field of view camera we another 48 megapixel 
telephoto 120x digital zoom lens and a 15 megapixel wide angle lens and this the selfie camera of this phone is a 20 megapixel camera so that is what this setup is like while on the other hand yo the redmi note 12 pro plus is a beast in the camera sector an absolute beast it has a 200 megapixel main camera 200 megapixel main camera i will not talk about the rest the rest are you know small things but 200 megapixel main camera i haven't used it but this is where the problem usually comes from from mid-range phones you could have a great camera but the processing of the images is poor because you have a less functioning processor than a flagship despite the fact that i've not used this i can say having a 200 megapixel main camera is amazing though the outcome may not be as good as a 15 megapixel a camera on the flagship the digital stabilization of this phone is amazing it almost feels like the phone is on a gimbal you sometimes won't even notice if you use a gimbal like i did the image is just so smooth so these are the three things i think you should consider you should consider the price you should consider uh, the processors used on both devices you should also consider the software updates or the security patch, whether you are willing to give up you know, security patch updates to have already fixed problems in your OS. Those are things you should consider. Then the list would be the features in those phones, you know, the amazing features which you can go through. Some of them have on both, some don't. Okay guys, so this is what I had for you guys today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do well to subscribe. I'll be glad to, you know, add one more person to the channel and you could be the one more person. Turn on your notifications so you have instant notifications every time we have a new video. And guys, most of the people who watch my content are not subscribed to the channel that's what my analytics say so please don't be among, among the numbers subscribe and guys until the next video for me peace